Hi, I'm Karen Berniston, the designer of Pop It Up Dice for Elizabeth Craft Designs, and I've got a card technique today I'm calling the Floating Clouds Pivot Card. Last week, my brother and his wife had their first baby. This is my little nephew, Michael, and he is the star of my card today. I'm going to make it as a baby card. Step one with any pivot card is to start with a card. So you can make it any size you like. For my card today, I'm going to use an A2 sized card. And I've used a pretty double-sided piece of pattern paper, but as it turns out, I'd like to have that cloud pattern from the one side of the paper on both sides of the card, so when it's both closed and open. And so to do that, I'm going to cut some slightly smaller panels to cover the front and the back of the card. And because I am going to put some cloud cutouts in this card, and those are going to be kind of all over, I didn't spare the adhesive. I went ahead and added the tape runner pretty much all over the panels that go on the front of the back of the card and that way I don't have to worry when I cut the clouds that those two papers will separate from each other. What gives this card the floating feel is the use of a transparency for the pivot parts. So what I'm going to do now is use a transparency. This one is printed. It was from the same collection and it happened to have clouds on it so it was just perfect for this technique. But you could do a plain transparency as well. Uh, the height of it I want it to be the same as the card so that'll be five and a half for me. And I want each panel to be just about the width of one panel of the card. So in my case, that'd be four and a quarter. But I'm going to come back about a sixteenth so that it's just a little bit less than the width of the panel. And that way it won't bunch up in the fold. Now before I can attach those transparencies to the card, I first need to get all of my cloud cutouts cut into the card itself. So I've got the card opened up on my platform. I'm using the two cloud dies that come in the All Seasons tree die. And I'm just going to roll that through the machine and then I'll just pop those out. I'm going to save the clouds. I'll repeat that cloud process about three more times and then I'll end up with cloud cutouts throughout my card and I'm going to, like I said, keep all of the clouds that came out because I'll use some of those later. Now it's time to add the transparency inside the card to both sides and for this I want adhesive only around the perimeter of the card. So my best bet for this is going to be a thin double-sided tape. If you don't have thin double-sided tape, you have a couple other options. You could cut down a thicker tape so it is a little thinner, or you could use glue, but just know the transparencies are slick, so if you're using glue, it's going to take a second for it to set up when you go to add the transparency pieces on there. After adding the thin tape all the way around the perimeter of the card, then just peel up the liner so it's sticky. And then with the transparency pieces, you'll want to line them up with the outside corners because they were cut just a little bit short on the width so that they won't bunch up in the fold. So they're going to come very close to the fold on the inside, but they will be just a little bit off of the fold. Just enough gap, basically, to allow you to open and close it quite easily. For this card, I'm going to use the Katie Label Pivot Die. And what I do first is I just use the alignment nubs that come on the die to allow me to place that die easily right over the center fold of the card. And it can go anywhere, top to bottom, along that fold. I'm going to pretty much center it, but you can see that I could have slid that a little higher, a little lower, as I wanted to. It probably would not be necessary to use the metal adapter plate had I had just a single piece of paper as my card. But since I doubled the paper and I had a pretty thick transparency, I went ahead and used it. I would get a cleaner, easier cut that way. The metal adapter plate works the best if you actually cut into the plate. So it's not just a shim that goes on the outside of your cutting pads. It should actually go inside the sandwich so that you're cutting down into that metal plate. And that's really what's going to make it cut through thick plastics the easiest. Okay, you can see how this card is coming together now. I've got the pivot card in there. Don't worry at all that the plastic parts are not connected to each other. Remember, we cut those a little bit less of the fold. It's not a single piece, so we will have to hinge it. But what's really nice about those not being connected is that it makes it really easy to go in there with a pair of detail scissors and snip out the paper. So what I really want is to leave the transparency ha having its little pivot points and I'm only in this step cutting the paper itself so that I can remove it from both of the pivot card labels. And that will just leave the transparency there floating. Now before I hinge those together, this is a great opportunity for me to get in there with some washi tape. And then I can just kind of lift those labels up to get the washi tape across the card and behind the labels. And then I'll just trim it to fit. 
the washi tape will hold down those inside edges of the transparency that didn't have any adhesive on them. And then you can turn that over, and since there is a little bit of exposed washi tape, then just add another strip on the outside of the card straight across the card lined up with the one below it, and then just trim it to fit. I'm just going to check that my transparencies are hinging really nicely and pivoting on those pivot points, and they are. So now I can go ahead and add that hinge I talked about, and I'm just going to use one of the clouds that was die cut from earlier. Folded it up the middle so I would kind of know where the center was, and then just put a fair bit of adhesive on the back of it so that it'll really hold up. So now you can use that hinge to connect the two labels together and just make sure that the fold that's in the cloud is right over the gap between the two labels. Once the hinge is on, it's going to start operating just like a regular pivot card. The card folds in one direction, the labels pivot in the opposite direction. Although it's not super visible, I still can see that thin tape through the transparency inside the card. And so for a consistent look as well, I'm going to go ahead and fold some washi tape right across the edge of all edges of the card. Now after that's complete, my adhesive is hidden and it gives me that real consistent border all the way around the perimeter of the card. A really great thing about Pop It Up Styles is they come with so many decorator pieces included in the set. So the Katie Label Pivot Card has several labels and I've used the two largest to cut a couple nested there for my title. And then I'm also going to use this cute little lawn fawn stamp set. Throw the Hello Sunshine and the Sun on this card. What I did for the Hello Sunshine was just hand cut a white banner and stamped it in black ink and embossed it with clear powder. For the sun, I stamped it, fussy cut it out, added some glossy accents, and then dumped some microfine glitter into the glossy accents before it dried. largest Katie label decorator die that comes in the set to cut out Michael's picture so that it'll fit nicely on the second label of the card. And then I'll just use a tape runner and add that right to the card. Okay, remember all of those clouds that I said to keep. I'm going to start using those now. I'm going to take some of the small ones and stick them to the transparency floating in one of the bigger cloud openings. And I don't really worry about the adhesive because I can always take a second cloud just make sure that I've got it aligned correctly in the mirror image position. So I might have to flip it over and then add the adhesive to that and glue that on the back side, just perfectly lined up with the one on the other side. And that way you never have to worry about having adhesive that doesn't show through the transparency. So I continued on with a couple more small clouds, stamped a little welcome baby greeting on a large cloud, and finished up my card. Another card that I made with the same design is this Happy Birthday card. This time I just used plain white cardstock and clouds, and I styled the new Hoppy the Frog die as a tree frog. Both the Katie Label Pivot card and the All Seasons Tree dies, the two I used on this card, are available now at local independent stores near you or on ecraftdesigns.com. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, I hope that you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page, Karen Burniston Designer. And you can always find more ideas on my blog, karenburniston.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>